I have a new internet friend, Katie from Katie of the Night. She's been getting deeper into exploitation films, so I suggested she watch a gory splatter film about a serial killer who's targeting strippers and who at one point uh, cuts the nipples off of one of them and then extracts this bloody milky martini. <laughs> I'm a good friend. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today, Katie and I are going to take a look at the Gorgor Girls from legendary exploitation director Herschel Gordon Lewis. A link to Katie's channel is in the description. After you've finished watching us here, you should go and watch her over there. And subscribe, too. That helps a lot. So, Herschel Gordon Lewis, uh, he got his start in filmmaking in the early 1960s making nudie cuties, you know, following in the footsteps of the great Russell Albion Meyer. But in 1963, he did something revolutionary. He made Blood Feast, history's first splatter film. That is pretty freaking cool. The movie is not cool, the movie is terrible, but you know, we all gotta start somewhere. Today on Exploitation r and I'm talking about the very first nudie cutie. And between 1963 and 1972, Lewis made a number of these gory splatter films that were sizable hits at the drive-ins. Uh, this film, Gore Gore Girls, this was his last film before he went on hiatus. He would return to filmmaking 30 years later in 2002 with a sequel to Blood Feast. But that's a story for another time. Let's talk about the Gore Gore Girls. Man, that's kind of hard to say, Gore Gore Girls. <laughs> Let's turn things over to my guest. What did you think about this film, Katie? Hey Rob, it is an honor to appear here on your channel today to talk about the Gorgor -Gore Girls. I am one to be drawn to titles, so this was one title that definitely seemed cool to me. I don't know much about Herschel Gordon Lewis, so I had very little context going into this film. In Gorgor -Gore Girls, this flamboyant PI teams up with a reporter in order to solve a string of stripper murders. So in this film, we see a lot of stripping and a lot of blood and guts. And a lot of this main character, this PI, it, he's very interesting. I'm gonna call him Mr. Clean because that's the nickname someone gave him. We see Mr. Clean like twirling his cane and being snooty at everyone the whole movie. First murder victim was Susie Cream Puff, a stripper, and um, I saw in the newspaper her real name was Ethel Cream Puff. And it was at that moment I knew this is probably going to be a funny flick. And I was right, this is kind of a comedy film. It feels a lot more like a comedy than it does a horror or a slasher. Now I haven't seen too many films that fall under uh, splatter. I don't know if I've seen official splatter films, right? So I don't have much to compare this to, but this splatter film was very goofy. It kind of feels like a homemade comedy movie. It's very silly. We even have Mr. Clean breaking the fourth wall a few times, which was cute. So the only other Herschel Gordon Lewis film I have seen is She Devils on Wheels, a biker film from the late 60s. But I did see a lot of similarities here between She Devils on Wheels and Gore Gore Girls in that the energy, it's very chaotic. There's a lot of overacting and there's just like a lot of yelling all the time. The cinematography in this film features a lot of close-ups, what you might call uncomfortable close-ups. So we get a lot of zooming in on the gore that's happening, which is pretty cool. I mean, we get extended scenes of like brains and mashed up butts and oh, the eyeball stuff. The eyeball stuff always gets me. Plenty of uh, just digging around in the guts, really up close. Uh, mutilation, some very creative mutilation. Um, although most of it takes place on victims who are already dead. So the torture element isn't there, but it's just the, mutil the mutilation element that's there. Aside from the close-ups on the blood and guts, we get a lot of close-ups on the strippers, on the lady parts. You know, just like extended shots on the chest or the butt or the thighs and it's just like staring. We as the audience are staring. And you know when you repeat a word over and over, after a while the word just starts to sound so weird? Well, we saw so much stripping in this movie. The stripping and the stripping and the stripping. I was like, 
stripping became this, this strange phenomenon. So one reason that Gore Gore Girls doesn't really feel like a horror or a slasher or anything of that nature is that we don't, there, there's no fear in the movie. There's no fear evoked in the audience. We don't even know these people before they get killed. A lot of times we see them on screen for the first time while they're being killed. So there's not a connection to the characters and there's not like suspense or anything spooky about this. It's really just about the spectacle. And yeah, the characters were mostly flat. And if even if they weren't flat, like you didn't understand them. I don't understand Mr. Clean. Like, was he a good guy or, or a bad guy? He had some questionable ethics, but the dialogue was interesting enough. And something about this very low budget feel just kind of makes you feel like you're watching something your friend made or watching some secret movie. So that was enough to keep me watching. But is it a good movie? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd say I'd give it like a C minus. It wasn't terrible and it was kind of funny and the gore was fun. And it is cool seeing something from this time period being so out there. And it actually did remind me of a Jalo in a few ways. You know, there's a masked gloved killer out there killing a certain type of people methodically and then there's a twist reveal at the ending so it is it does share a lot of elements in common with Jalo, which you know is my thing and it definitely took the violence up a notch so you know props for the violence and i think that's all i about all i have to say about the film it was on my watch list so i'm glad glad we got to do this review back over to you rom Thank you, Katie. I'm glad you had at least some fun with this movie. I've said it before on the channel, but I'm not a big fan of Herschel Gordon Lewis. I respect the hell out of the guy, don't get me wrong there, but his films, I don't really connect with them. I mean, I do quite like 2000 Maniacs, and I think this one is watchable, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan. Here in Gore Girl Girls, there's some really funny stuff, which helps a lot. I particularly like the scenes with the detective and the uh, press. Uh, those are pretty good. It's, you know, kind of a physical gag, but it, but it works. But, you know, even aside from this sort of physical humor, there's some really great lines, you know, so the dialogue here is not too bad. Oh, and as a fan of stand-up comedy, it's really great to see Henny Youngman here. I mean, he is a legendary one-liner comic, and it's just super cool that he's in a Herschel Gordon Lewis movie. If you don't recognize the name Henny Youngman, you've probably heard the one-liner joke, Take my wife, please. Yeah, that's him. My favorite joke from him, though, is the one that goes, uh, I have enough money to survive as long as I live until 4 p.m. <laughs> and the splatter here is pretty good. I mean, it's really gross, but that's what you want, right? Gross? Well, you're in luck because it's gross. Uh, but like I said before, I, I don't really connect with Herschel Gordon Lewis films. Um, like Katie said, there is no tension here. This is just a vehicle for sleaze and splatter, uh, which is totally fine, by the way. I'm a big fan of both of those things. My problem is, if that's all you're going for, you know, style over substance, then have a cool style. And especially on the camera work side of things, I don't really like Herschel Gordon Lewis's style. I mentioned at the top of the review that an early influence on Herschel Gordon Lewis was Russ Meyer, and looking at his films is instructive here. I mean, take a look here, for example, at how Russ shot dancers. He knew where to put the camera to make them look their best. And man, they just look so good. Just big and powerful and sexy and just, well, it's just cool. It just looks cool. I mean, and compare that to how Herschel Gordon Lewis filmed uh, his strip club scenes in this movie. I mean, it looks like he just put the camera just out in the audience on a table somewhere. It just, it's really boring, and it's not at all flattering to the women on the stage. And they're gorgeous. He should have flattered them. I don't know. I guess I just kind of think that if you can convince beautiful women to be in your sleazy movie, then you're sort of obligated to a certain extent to make them look their best. Shoot them in a flattering way. The audience will like a lot more, and I think they'll like a lot more too, because they'll look great. Do the right thing, exploitation filmmaker. Make your cast look beautiful. And I think better camera work could have helped in the kill scenes too. Uh, the splatter is fine, I don't have any complaints about that. Especially for the time. 
Like Katie mentioned, we don't really know these victims until they are victims, which means there's really no tension here, but I think tension could have been built, at least to a certain extent, by filming these actresses in a flattering, if not to say, titillating way. I mean, you don't have to know who the hot woman is to want her to live. She's hot. That's reason enough. <laughs> Man, that is just... That sounds terrible. Uh, but you know what I mean. I just mean that, you know, beauty is a quick way to get an audience invested. But anyway, I'm probably spending too much time thinking about how we can improve a 50-year-old, super low-budget splatter film. But, I don't know, this actually is pretty good advice, I think. If you're going to make a sleazy movie, and I totally encourage you to do so, then take full advantage of your beautiful cast by making them look beautiful. They'll thank you, I'll thank you. And I would also like to thank Katie for joining me this week. Check out and subscribe to her channel and watch some of her videos. You might even see me over there.